G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new, I'm very excited to do this video for you today because it is my Hobonichi unboxing. You can see the gorgeous cream package has arrived, obviously a little bit dirty from transit, all the way from Japan to sunny Southern California. I haven't opened this, you can see I'm slicing into it right now. I've been so excited to dive into it, but I really wanted to give you my first impressions, even though I'm already know I'm already know, even though I already know I'm going to be excited for what's in the box. It's not as modest as an order as I placed last year, um, but I'll go through everything. I'll tell you the prices for stuff as well. And I've also got a bunch of my other Hobonichi stuff on the table just in case I want to chat about it because I can't help myself. I chat about everything all the time. And this is one of the most exciting parts of the year when we get to uh, unbox our 2024 planners, etc., etc. And I've got a really special one in here as well because you will see. Um, here you go. There's some words. Enjoy the words. I don't think there's any sensitive information in here, so hopefully we can just pull it all out. Um, what is that? Oh, I think that's that bag. Oh, look, here it is. This is what I was... Wow, it's tiny. <laughs> Can't wait to show you the difference. Look at this. I got this and this and this. I've got everything. All right, there you go. That's the whole box. See you later, box. I'm not saving you this year because you're a little dirty. Um, but I might harvest some of the ephemera from that box, like that little sticker. Here's the free gift with purchase. And then also this is a free gift with purchase. I have pulled out my others. These are the three Hobonichi free gift with purchase pens that I have. They're Uni Jetstream pens. If you're ever looking for a refill, you can get a whole bunch of them on Amazon in America. Um, I have the blue, red, black, and green refills. One of these has a green in them. Not quite sure which one it is. Um, but I use these for everything. These are probably my, like, everyday pen. And this is a pretty interesting color scheme. I have to say, I wasn't the biggest fan of the brown and blue when I first got it. But now I use this one almost only and exclusively. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what changed there, but I did become a bit of a fan of it. And this is uh, quite lovely. It looks like it's a gray and some kind of gray, sage, grage, green. Not quite sure what you would call that. But uh, again, the red, the blue and the black. I just love these because they're pretty sturdy. They're a ballpoint pen. Um, I like the ergonomic feel of them. They're not too heavy. Like they don't feel super uh, weighted and luxurious. They just feel like a very everyday pen. So I think that's why in my mind I use them as an everyday pen. Um, obviously I've got a lot of nice pens I could probably use instead of, but it's one of those things like the cats play with the boxes and I always end up using the free gift with purchase. So it's just gonna be what it is, but glad to have set uh, a set of four now for my four hands that are always writing. All right, let's look at this. Pretty interesting little reflective thing here. This is a mini bag, snack o'clock. This totally looks like an art snacks bag <laughs> with the pretzel. How cute is that? I don't know what I would use this for. Does it kind of stay flat? I might be able to put some pencils or something in there if it stood up flat. I might be able to cut a little rectangle of cardboard to sit down the bottom to keep it open flat and possibly use it as a bit of a, uh, like a little pen pot or something. Not quite sure. If not, it will get stapled into my big old junk journal, my jumbo journal, and I'll just use it as a pocket. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I would need this for. <laughs> I just took that to work. Put my little lunch in there. All right. Cute. Thank you, Hobonichi, for that. I'm going to save these wrappers because I save everything. Everything is usable. Here, I got this. Um, so those were free. Now we're going to get into uh, the price tags and everything. I wanted to let you know, just in case you were curioso, here is the Mitsubishi Uni uh, mini colored pencils, set of 12. I'm going to open them. This was uh, 726 yen. A good rule of thumb for back in the day, but it doesn't really work anymore, is that 100 yen to a US dollar. It's actually uh, better than that now from the US standpoint. Like, I think... I don't know what the actual conversion is, but I think if you use uh, like one American dollar, you get like a dollar, like 112 yen or something. I'm not quite sure. I didn't even check, but everything's just slightly cheaper uh, for us. But that's not to say that it's actually cheap. A lot of this is quite expensive. So I just wanted to let you know uh, what the costs were involved in the, the little haul today. Here is the set. I don't know why I wanted to purchase these. I just thought they looked so cute. I don't even think I'd be able to use these without a pencil extender because they're just tiny. I don't even know why I wanted them. Honestly, they just looked so cute. And I really do love the Uni Mitsubishi pencils. So I figured these are probably really good quality for a really small set. And that possibly the next time I travel, instead of taking a big old set of pencils, maybe I'll be tempted to take this 
and see if I can make do because the reality is I barely use the pencils that I take or I take a really specific color palette and I always kind of think like, oh, I just wish this was a smaller travel set. So maybe that's why, again, I wouldn't even give myself that much credit. But that was 726 yen, so I would think of it as about like seven US dollars, which is actually pretty good, I, I think so. This is, what's next on my thing? Ah, the Weeks. This is my Weeks planner. I currently use a Weeks. Last year I got the 101 Dalmatians uh, cover and I love it. I literally do all my planning in here. Everything is in here. So I really am a fan of the Weeks. I always needed that monthly view and a weekly view. I was never so uh, keen on the daily one day per page. I like them as journals, but as a planner, it wasn't as effective for me. So the Weeks have really, really worked. Here is this, it's a lovely uh, fabric cover. And the brand, this one is the Yumi Kitagishi, uh, it's called Take A Look. And it has this cute little cat with a teddy bear and a little rabbit thing. I love the color, I love this deep blue green. I'm not quite sure if it'll show up for you, but it's got some nice foiling on it. And obviously the little, uh, little design on the front, 2024 on the side. I keep mine in this, Galen leather, crazy horse, uh, what do you call it? Like cover. It has this zip. I never use this zip. I rarely use these pockets for anything. Uh, in essence, it's just kind of like a document wallet for me, but I have my initials stamped down the bottom as well. And this came very suede looking uh, and obviously through daily use for it being my planner, it's become very soft and malleable and I love the feeling of it now. It's just, actually I will say one time I was massaging my hands with <laughs> my Disney Cruise Line H2O Beauty Sea Salt uh, Body Lotion. I love this. I always massage my hands with this lotion uh, before I start videos and things. And one time I had too much lotion on and I grabbed this planner and it was kind of, it made a handprint on there. But then I massaged the lotion in and it kind of moisturized the cover into this, um, it's like slightly glossy, a lot more uh, lived in kind of a feel. So I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think there's probably a leather conditioner you could buy to do that. But I am going to say uh, maybe a hand moisturizer is a good dupe for that. Don't quote me. If you ruin your journal, it's not my fault. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> I just did it. Um, but yeah, it holds this perfectly and I just love it. I, I love the whole setup. It's worked perfectly for me. So I'm really glad to have that. I used these as a little tip in for my photo journal. I'm going to have to find another use for these. What's in this? Life is present. Got to write that down. Cute little insert that I got with the weeks. Not quite sure what I'll do with this. I purchased the January start. It is the Japanese version. Uh, so all the little extras in here are in Japanese. And I just like that. I mean, to me, Hobonichi is a Japanese brand. So I kind of like all the Japanese on it. And obviously I have my affinity with Japan and all things Japanese. So that works for me, but there are English versions. I don't know if there is an English version of that design, but there are English versions of a lot of the Hobonichi books, just in case you want to be able to translate a lot of that stuff. I also learned Japanese in school, so reading the dates and everything is fine, but the numbers are there, so it's okay. It all works for me. The next thing I've got on my list, actually, I'm going to skip straight to that. Oh, the cover, the week's one was 2,970 yen, which is about $28 US. A little expensive, I would say, for a planner, but I do love it. So I'll enjoy that. This is a folder set, two A5 folders in here. This is the little gifts one. I loved the design. I love the little gifts design and I was considering purchasing the A5 cover just to have it because I do have a couple of Hobonichi cousins that I use as uh, journals for things. Like this is a workshop journal. I do a lot of my workshop stuff in here. Um, for those of you that just did Virtual Voyage, Eight. All that Burtonville stuff is in here. I plan lessons in here. So this is an old one, um, but it, it's in this Sojourner cover. And I do love these covers, especially the ones I customize with all the patches. This is a Chic Sparrow cover as well. Really heavy duty. This one is an older, uh, again, kind of whatever journal that I was planning a lot of stuff in, workshops, etc. And I considered getting the cover just to have that design because it's so nice, but I really am trying to not overspend on things. And I thought it would just be unnecessary at the end of the day, because I'd just be taking this cover off to give it to one of these that already have covers. And then I'd be forcing another journal in here just to make it happen. So I wasn't guilty that I had a spare cover lying around. So I decided not to, you know, in, at the end of the day, if I really wanted to, I could buy it years later, like I do these. 
I was on the Mina Perinen piece cover trend, like the one you would have to sign up for the lottery. And I did win it the first time and I got this and I lost it the second time. So then I ended up on eBay and bought one of these. This is from 2014, this cover. And I purchased it secondhand from eBay. And I was going to start doing that. And I do actually really like the piece covers for this year. But since I don't plan in the Techos anymore, these little ones, this just became like a little workbook. I did my Daisy Ween stuff in here when we made that story. Um, these were my old planners. I just don't use them anymore. So I'm, I'm happy that I have these covers for this, but they're really not going to get any more use since I won't be purchasing the A6 for this. I never say never, like I'd love to in the future, you know, find new uses for these things, but I have to be realistic. I would just be spending money to spend money and feel the high for two seconds and enjoy opening it and then realize I don't have much of a use for it. So I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit cautious of that. And that's why instead I got this folder because then I could actually have the design that I really, really liked. And uh, have a use for it. I will use these to store little things, probably photos uh, and little documents, especially because when I do my jumbo journaling, I throw everything into a box over there. It can get quite messy and uh, sometimes I throw stickers in there as well that are just peeled off a package. And if there's photos in there, sometimes they get a little ruined. So I might put anything that's a little bit more, that needs a little bit more protection inside the folder in the box, um, or I'll just find something to put in there. I I'm just always searching for a folder. So these are really, really cute. Love these. The set was 682 yen, so about five US dollars. And I love it. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, a free piece of paper. Get rid of that. And then it comes to it. We are coming to, I am coming to the last piece of information, which I think is probably the most important and the most uh, exciting. I have purchased a new five-year Hobonichi Techo. This was the box the first one came in. It was yellow. I thought this would be yellow as well, but this is blue. The th sad thing is I can't fit my original into this box anymore. And you know what's funny? When I pick it up, I just don't even remember it fitting in here because I will show you. This is what it is now. It is a massive beast of five years of my life fully documented in there. I mean, you put them side by side, you can literally tell. Like, there's no way that's going back in the box. So this just stores a uh, pocket journal. I just love it because I had all my stickers on here and I remember decorating this box, being really excited to see it all decorated. I ended up using the box that this cover came in. I got this from the Tobichi store in Kyoto, this red leather cover. And so that box I started decorating uh, with... Uh, patches. This is from the Anaheim Fall Festival. I remember that. Um, patches and stickers and just all sorts of good stuff. But now it won't even fit in here. Like if I try to put this in here and close it, that's as good as it's going to get. <laughs> so I ended up putting it in this box, which is it's so funny. But this is the one that that Mina Perrin and Peace cover came in. So I put it in here, but even in this box, it won't fit. It's just way too chunky. Like, it's it's burst out of everything. And I'm not mad about that, but it is, uh, it's just a consideration if you're someone like me that started decorating all these boxes because you thought you were going to store them in there. Uh, you will most likely definitely grow out of this box. You may not grow out of the other box, but probably... <laughs> There's just no way to contain it. It's five years of your life. And if you're like me and like super dedicated to actually documenting mostly everything um, with photos and all, it's just going to be chunky. That just is what it is. So I'm excited to show you the, the comparison. I guess I could take this out. I didn't buy any pencil boards. I still love my Astro Boy one and my Marie one. I don't really use the Marie one, the Weeks, the long one. I mostly just use this A6 and it's getting all scuffed up and lovely, but... Yeah, I just love it. Love, love, love it. And it actually does help. It keeps the page flatter. And you wouldn't think, but even if you've got slightly heavy-handed handwriting, you're kind of embossing the paper. And when you've got all these papers, I mean, the flatter you can get them, the better, because you really just don't want it to become too huge. Like, it's kind of burst out of this cover as well, if I'm honest. That's why I only have it in one side. And especially because I use it every day and it's just that the stress on that binding is so almost going to explode. I'm trying to just be gentle with it until I get to the end of the year, because <laughs> this is the last uh, the last year I'll be handling it, and I want it to stay nice and put together when I do end up shelving it. But we're going to do a little bit of a comparison. So originally, my first Hobonichi five-year techo, I'm going to take everything away that it didn't come with. 
So we can do a literal comparison. It was this yellow box and inside I had this uh, pamphlet, this little brochure that was kind of all about what you could do with your five-year journal. And then it came with this, which I guess is just another insert with info on it. Nope, I'm lying. That was the cover. Oopsie. Got to do this correctly. It actually came with this piece of paper, which is just a leaf of paper from the inside of the journal. And it was to test all your inks and things that uh, you needed to test before you committed to doing it in your journal. So that's what that came with. And it came with this brown cover. It looks very biblical. Um, <laughs> it does look like a little Bible, especially now that it's really, really full. Has the date and the Hobonichi five-year type shop. Let's open this one up and see what it looks like. The blue is really pretty. All right, we have a pamphlet. This one looks like a really big fold out leaflet. Again, most of the same, what you can do with it. Just kind of explaining the whole process. It does have another one of these leaves so you can test out your inks much like my first one did. And look how thick thin and flat that is. That's so funny. So this is 2024 to 2028. The price on this one was 4,620 yen. So it's about 45 US dollars around the 44, maybe 43. Um, it's expensive, but break that cost up into five, I guess, because it's a five year journal. You can get the, uh, the annual cost of owning a journal like this. It's about 10 bucks a year, I guess. Less than that. Uh, beautiful box. Love it. This will obviously stay in the box until I start using it. It feels so thin. That is a crack up. There is no way mine was this thin. There's just no way. <laughs> this doesn't even feel like the same product. It does. I mean, like, it, it looks the same and the paper feels the same. I do believe this is still the Tomoe River paper, if I'm not mistaken. I know that Hobonichi did switch uh, papers, but... They've got a pretty good match, and apparently it might be a little bit better, but I think some of the journals they had on their run were going to continue until the product uh, like had to switch over to the new paper, and I want to say that I think this 2024 to 2028 is still Tomorrow River. I don't really care. I don't really think it's a huge difference, although I don't know if I've tried the new paper, but you know, I, I do trust that whatever paper Hobonichi picked is a good fit, right? Like it's, I don't think they're going to suddenly turn to like really cheap, bad paper. Um, this is the direct side-by-side -side comparison. So this is what they look like before. And this is what they look like after you've been in them for five years. <laughs> the poor spine. Look at that. That is so funny. I'll give you a really clear view by moving all my junk. That is hilarious. Me before I moved to America. Me now. <laughs> it's not true. It's half true. Um, Really, really excited. This has been one of my favorite journals. Um, I think it is probably one of my favorites, uh, if not the absolute favorite. And I think it's just because I've been in it for so long, I really feel like actually connected to this journal. So many life events uh, are documented in here. I'll try and give you every possible view that you might want to see while I moan about how much I love this journal. It's just, it's just so important for me. I don't think I could go to not having this kind of daily documentation at this point. If I squeeze it as hard as I can, I wonder if I can get it to... Be... No, I just can't. I can literally feel all the photos in there and the stickers and the ephemera that just won't let me squeeze it beyond that. <laughs> Sometimes I think, what if I got one of those hydraulic presses and like just really gave it a good press? I do from time to time give it a good uh, wiggle so that I can set the pages back into the spine back here. The thing is when you're actually getting to the point where you're writing in it at this point, when you're writing down here like this, you don't want to put it so flat that it starts to stress over here. So what I did at the start of the year to address that, and that doesn't happen on year five, that actually kind of happens all the time. Like even when you first start the journal, there's going to be a difference between how thick that 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 is and how thin this side is. I would always prop up that page to about the same level so that it just sat flat, like it was horizontal to the table. So I wasn't putting too much pressure on it. Because so I think that's the thing that I would be the most careful about with the five year is how much you're, you're really putting it through. And then, especially if it was my weeks, I could uh, just use that to rest my wrist on as well so that my wrist was level with this. It's like such a random thing to think about, but if you've never done one before, it could definitely trip you up. Um, and in the beginning, I used to actually pull the book, uh, like I used to pull it back this way and kind of write, 
like that. And I just think that's so much stress on the spine. So I wouldn't do that anymore. Uh, but over time, I learned to just use this to prop my hand up. And then when you get to the back of the book this way, again, you're going to have to try and uh, find a way to get your hand up to the same level as the book, but there is going to be a hump. So you might even want to place this underneath here to address the hump and then get your hand raised. It's a whole thing, but I'm very committed to this book <laughs> because it's a chronicle of five years of my life. And I mean, even just looking at this single page, um, that was in Australia. I remember that. I remember these. These are uh, from Merry Mix Media. Obviously had a bit of a Disney day there. And uh, my sister's wedding is documented on here. Like what a huge life event to have remembered. And there's just, I, I, I can't flick through this book without just stopping and being flooded with memories, especially the visual stuff here. Like these little strips that I do for the holidays that I take, I can remember a whole holiday just looking at them. And I want to keep doing that. I want the next five years to be documented as well as I did these five years. I'm still going with this. I still have a lot to go. So you'll probably see me working on that on YouTube, hopefully uh, throughout the end of the year so that I can give you a nice fully finished flip. There are flips of this every year that I've done it. So you can go and check that out on YouTube. I think there's uh, music only flips and chatty flips, if I'm not mistaken. I do take the time to film those a little bit nicer. So uh, I don't know why I just do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those videos I really spend some time putting together. But it's, yeah, it's one of my favorite things. And it's not just for, you know, just for documenting. I've just managed to be like really, I don't know, I, it's kind of worked with my life a little bit to kind of help me take track, uh, take track, take notice, and to kind of spot patterns of behavior that I have and to kind of uh, understand myself in a way where I'm not analyzing myself, I'm not tracking myself, but I get to kind of check in often enough. And I've been through cycles that over years, I've had a chance to look back at because you kind of glance through, like if I'm filling out the day here, I'll look back through years at a time and just think, wow, I've come so far since here. Or like, I remember this year, it was really, really bad, but look at how good this year is. It's a really nice way to kind of uh, give yourself perspective, I think. And Perspective can help a lot when you're, you know, growing as a human being. So I can't, I can't gush about it enough. Obviously, I'm not sponsored, but I do think it's one of my favorites. And I'll always say it's a huge commitment. So if you're not the type of person to actually commit to it, just be cautious. I don't want you to start something that's going to make you feel bad if you don't actually do it, because it's a lot of money and also a lot of expectation, especially when you're seeing it online. Like I, I do spend a lot of time devoted to making this journal happen. It doesn't just happen. It, it's one of those ones that you actually have to work on a little bit and it becomes a project, but it's it's a passion project. You put in the effort where you have to catch up a few times. There are other days where it all just seems to fall together and weeks of, you know, just making it work. And then, you know, you're on that cycle for years and years and years and having been on it for five years, I can't say it ever got easier. My, my, uh, my just feelings about it have gotten easier. Like I'm, I'm not so hard on myself if I'm a few days behind. Um, and then I also know that it's just as simple to catch up if I dedicate some time to it. So you'll find your flow with it if you are if you're going to commit to it. But it is a commitment any way you look at it. It's going to be five years of you turning up to it daily or near daily, and uh, you know figuring it up, uh, figuring out a plan for how you want to use it and what you want to use it for. For me, it's just documenting what happens in my life. And over time, it became a lot less about uh, you know what I was doing and now how I'm doing. And so I think that was also an interesting shift that I noticed about how I worked in this too. And a lot of it's about family. So I think that's why I love it too. It was very special. I'm holding this one because this is the one I know. This is the one that I'm familiar and comfortable with. And this is what I'm proud of. But this is the one I should be showing you. It's, it's empty. There's nothing to see. What are you supposed to do? I mean, that's funny too, right? I am so attached to this. This is exactly the same product, but it's completely different now. This, I mean, I, I would never, I wouldn't pick this up in a house fire, but I would run through the flames to get this one. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't. I would just watch old videos of me flipping it if I really lost it. But it is very special to me. It looks like everything is exactly the same. I mean, to be honest, I think it is. It's just exactly the same, different dates. I'm not going to flip through every page because I don't think that's necessary. Maybe some of the font changed. I'm not quite sure. Not inside, but like maybe at the back. I can't imagine they would have changed much. From everyone that I watch... Uh, doing five-year Hobonichis, 
but we all kind of use them differently and we all kind of feel a little bit different about them. So I uh, take my word with a grain of salt. I do love it. I kind of love everything that I got. Um, the only thing I'm stuck on is this little bag. It, I'll probably staple it into my Jumbo journal if I'm honest. I'll pop these over to the side. Thank you so much, Hobonichi, for my free gift with purchase. Is that all that I got? No, my little weeks. There's my weeks. I'm going to put all of this back so that I can enjoy it next year and keep going with everything I've got for this year. That's my Hobonichi haul. I can't wait to go and watch some more videos of what everyone else got. It was all pretty good this year. I think I could have done with a little bit more variety in the whole, like, cutesy space. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I don't, I, I mean, I, it's not like I couldn't find something that I wanted. I just, I think I was so excited last year with the, um, with the 101 Dalmatians that I was hoping for a few more Disney collaborations and I didn't really get, uh, anything that I would probably want this year since I already have this, which is great. It's honestly, it's all great. It's all good. Really enjoy Hobonichi as a brand and uh, we'll stay loyal for the time being. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye.